Welcome back to the channel guys, Big Y'all Brett. I wanted to go over my uh, 2019 preseason rankings. I'm gonna go over the top 10. I personally think once you get past the top 10, you really kind of get into a wishy-washy area. It's really difficult to determine who should be in that ranking. Um, but uh, like I said, here we go. So let's, um, I'm gonna start out with around the, the number 10 spot and move our way up here. Uh, I, I really think, and this is just my personal opinion, I think there's some teams that are being kind of uh, mis, uh, misrepresented or, or left off the radar. I think there's a lot of really good teams out there. And some of them are so close in talent, and they play in different conferences, so it's really kind of hard to tell. I'm going to go through why I think each one of these teams is where they're at and why they should be. Um, ranked higher or, or should be ranked where they're at compared to where other people are ranking them, I guess. So let's start out with number 10. Number 10, uh, I'm going to have to go with Michigan. Um, Michigan's a pretty solid team. They got a lot of talent. Um, there, There's a lot of concerns about this team that they that they can't take the next step. There, there a lot of people are wondering if they're going to be a leader, if they're just going to stay in hovering that good mark. Uh, Georgia's suffered from that for years. Uh, we were always a good team, but very rarely would we be considered at that elite level. So, so Michigan number ten. Then I, I think it's kind of a toss-up between um, number nine, as far as as far as being either Texas or uh, Oregon. I think Texas or Oregon, Oregon, either one could take that nine spot. Both of them are pretty good teams. I think Oregon's kind of on the upswing, so looking forward to seeing what they can do this year. Um, they're getting they're getting plenty of attention. Um, they they've had some players go pro, and, and are really doing well. So I think that their team has has got a good good chance to to be in the top ten or should be in the top ten. Um, number and you can swap you can swap nine and eight around with Oregon or Texas, whichever way you like. Uh, I think Texas has a good ball club. Obviously, they come out and worked Georgia over. I'm not going to go into in, in how, who, why, where, and what happened, but at the end of the day, I think that, that Georgia was just kind of let down because we didn't get picked for a playoff game. You can blame that on our loss at LSU. Whatever you want to, I think that the team was deflated going into that game. That's one of the reasons, or the biggest reason why we lost. No excuse. We should have played that game like any other game. But anyway, that's why I feel like those teams are there. Um, then we get into the number seven spot, and I, here again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, kind of trying to pick between either LSU, Texas A&M, or Florida. And I'm going to have to say LSU. I think LSU. Uh, well, I'm going to have to say, excuse me, Florida. Uh, I think Florida is a is a good team there. I think they're coming along. I still think they're a long way from being able to beat Georgia, but uh, and and obviously, I don't want them to be ranked any higher. <laughs> but Florida is starting to put together a ball club. I don't think their coach is going to be able to take them to the next level. I think they're going to be good. I just don't think they're going to be great. Um, after that, I'm going to have to say uh, Texas A&M. This is this is a team that's ranked well below where I think their talent level is and I think the only reason they're ranked as low as they are is because of their previous track record. I think if they had a better track record, they had a better win loss, you know, over the past few years, had been more competitive against some of the bigger teams they played, they'd have a much better ranking, they'd be more respected than they are. But I think this year I think Texas A and M has a legitimate opportunity to upset Alabama. So we'll see what happens. Um and then of course uh, LSU. I mean LSU is a is a really good team. Um, they they've proven that they can get in there and play with the big boys and have done so on numerous occasions. If you play LSU at Death Valley, that's a tough game. So um, this year I think that they could be they could be ranked up there. Um, so you're looking at let me back up here. So you're looking at somebody's got Notre Dame ranked in the top 10. I, I don't agree with that at all. So I'm going to jump up to Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma um, and Oklahoma and Ohio State, 4 and 5. I think it really be flip-flop either way. I think Oklahoma can be number 4. 
I think Ohio State can be number four. I, mean, I think it kind of goes back and forth. I think both of those teams kind of kind of stutter a little bit, and, and I kind of feel like I have to put Oklahoma a step higher, and then I feel like I have to step them back down because they lost their quarterback. And now they got Jalen Hurts, which is a completely different kind of quarterback than what they normally have in that system. Normally they're they're a high-profile, high-powered, air-raid kind of offense. They do a good bit of running. But bringing in a dual-threat quarterback like this, my opinion, you guys can say they've had dual-threat quarterbacks in the past or whatever, I don't think Jalen Hurts has the kind of arm accuracy that they need to run that team the way they ran it before. Uh, he's certainly not a Baker Mayfield. He's certainly not a Tua. He's certainly not a Trevor Lawrence. He's just not. So I think that he's going to be a great player for that team, but I don't know that he's as good as those players there before. We'll see. If he's able to get out there and air rate it out, then that lends to the credibility to where SEC teams say the SEC is harder. Their defense is better. So it's, it's hard to say. But I think that I, I want to say that I think Oklahoma at this point is a step above Ohio State. Hey guys, a uh, little bit of a little bit of a break from the norm here. If you've made it this far in the video, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to share. Uh, leave a comment what you think here. If I've, if I've got anything wrong, if I've got the teams in the wrong place, or you think your team should have made the top ten, and I didn't put them on the list, please let me know, and I will be glad to hash it out next time. Also, if you guys have a team that you would like for me to make a top, uh, not a top ten video. If you guys have a team that you would like for me to discuss what their preseason looks like and what they're coming up uh, season I think they're gonna look like leave me a, leave me a comment in the comment section I'll be glad to look into that for you guys again thanks so much so number five Ohio State number four Oklahoma now the big three I don't think anybody disagrees with who the best three teams in the country are you look at recruiting classes if you look at um, the fact that these three teams have been in contention over the past three years, and Oklahoma has been too, which is why they're ranked number four. Um, I think that, that you're looking at Georgia, Alabama, and Clemson. And I think you have to look at them in that order. Georgia number three, Alabama number two, and Clemson number one. Georgia number three, obviously, um, we've we've had massive success with the with having Kirby Smart on as the new coach. We've had great recruiting. We've had sellout games, which is not unusual, but it's continued to trend. We've, we've just continued along the trail to greatness and we're getting better and better. This last year's recruiting class forced Alabama to turn in the best recruiting class they've had in the past 10 years or more in order to retake the number one spot. Had they have not, had they have had a regular recruiting class type ranking that they normally had, Georgia still would have been number one. So it took them having a, um, a, a bit of a banner year for recruiting on top of what they normally would have. Um, let me put it this way. It would be like normally scoring four touchdowns a game, but in order to win this game, you had to score six. I mean, it was a big, big difference for them as, as far as their ability, ability to recruit last year. They did a great job. So they obviously uh, beat Georgia last year in the SEC championship and went on to play in the national championship last year and was completely dominated and devastated by Clemson. Nobody disagrees with that. Clemson did a great job. Clemson come out with that phenom Trevor Lawrence they have. He's coming back again next year. I think that that's a real, real, re, a real big reason to recognize Clemson as the number one in the country. I know they lost some players, but they, they've got plenty of returning players. Dabo knows how to coach those guys up. They're going to be just fine. So I think looking at, looking at the record, you're going to see that the, that team's going to continue to perform really well. So this year, you're going to find out real quick. Um, Georgia's got a pretty tough schedule. A lot of these teams, I mean, we're going to play, we're going to play Notre Dame, which is ranked number nine in some people's, in some people's preseason list. We're going, to play, um, we're going to play Florida. I mean, we could end up playing uh, LSU if they win in the SEC championship. Uh, we could end up playing Alabama. I mean, there's, there's a ton of teams in the top ten that we could end up playing. And we still have to make our way through an SEC schedule. I think Alabama is probably going to have a bit of a struggle this year, more so than what they've had in the past. Georgia's offense has done a pretty good job of being able to hang with um, Alabama's defense. We've been able to continue to put points on the board and score, not necessarily any blowout games, but that's because of the defense. 
I think that had Georgia, if Georgia would have played against Alabama and Alabama had not have had Tua Tonga-Valoa as a backup in the national championship and then turn around had Jalen Hurts as a backup quarterback in the SEC championship, Georgia would have beat them both times. And the reason I can say that is because if you look at the stats, if you look at how those games went until they changed out the quarterback, it's pretty it's pretty evident that the Georgia's defensive Georgia's defensive coaching had set up the defense to prepare against that one player and not against both. Unacceptable for it to happen a second time, but that's exactly what happened. Uh, hats off to Alabama; they 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 did a great job. Uh, hats off to Clemson; they've done a great job. Uh, Georgia's going to be in the fight this year for for sure. Uh, Clemson's going to be in the fight for sure, and Clemson, oh, Clemson, Alabama's going to be in the fight for sure. So we're going to see what exactly happens, but I think those are going to be your top 10 or 11, depending on how you look at it. Um, anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Jump down in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day. God bless. Go dogs.